All right. As I mentioned, I have special guest Ryan Chance on the show today. He is the founder of Sumo Quote. So Ryan, thanks for joining the show. Thanks for having me, Dylan. It's great to be here with you, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited just because as we talked leading up to the show, you are a very creative guy. You're very entrepreneurial. You have a lot of success in the business world. And I think it's interesting that you, you've been in different business lines and you've kind of applied that entrepreneurial insight and passion to the roofing world and a sumo quote. But before we get into all of that, I just kind of want to give you a chance to give our listeners your background. I know you, you know, were a partner in Epic Roofing. So kind of give your background in the industry and an overview of Epic Roofing. Yeah, you bet. So I actually started shingling for Epic Roofing when Epic was six people. So Epic has now grown to about 150 people. So a little different than when I started. But uh, I started shingling for Epic back in 2003. I uh, did about a year and a half with them back then. I went and did some other things because uh, shingling you know, roofs didn't seem to be what uh, my long-term goals were. So I did some other things, did an MBA, ended up buying a denim line of all things, a blue jeans company, ran that for, you know, two to three years and which was very interesting and great. I was fortunate to learn a lot there and then move on. I sold that to a company in Germany. Uh, and then, you know, Epic at the time came knocking again and said, and by that point they were about 80 people. And they said, hey, you know, now we feel like you'd be a better fit because now it's going to be more about the management side of what you can bring. So joined Epic again, bought in as a partner a year later, uh, loved the business and the industry. Uh, but as a part of that, um, we, we built some technology to help with our sales side specifically, which is now turned into Sumo Quote and uh, having a blast with that these days. There's a lot of good things and a lot of growth going on there. Yeah, that's, it's such an interesting story. And for just for the background of Epic Roofing, are you guys mostly residential? Are you mostly commercial? Are you half and half? Where are you located? Yeah, we grew out of the residential side. We're about a 60-40 split right now. So our commercial division has certainly grown significantly in the last number of years. Uh, and on, I come from the residential side, so that's the side I know better. But uh, on the residential side, uh, we've certainly been growing the retail side of our business, but insurance was always our bread and butter. And if anybody Googles Calgary hail these days, they're going to see some crazy pictures of a storm that hit us recently. So we're, uh, yeah, we're all out on the roofing side right now, which is great. And, uh, and yeah, it's fun to see some actually new and interesting ways that we're using Sumo Quote through the processes there as well. Yeah, I, I googled images of Calgary and it's just unreal the amount of hail you guys got and the size of hail. It's just otherworldly. Yeah, tennis ball. Like it was legitimately tennis ball, walls of siding where there's more wall exposed than siding left on the wall. Like it's just, I'd seen that in a few rural areas previously. I'd never seen it that big and hit the city. So um, yeah, it's... <laughs> Fortunately, unfortunately, right? Unfortunately for a lot of the people there. Uh, but as a roofing owner, it's always, you know, you breathe a sigh of relief. There's guaranteed work. You know, the next two years, we're going to be utterly swamped. So um, yeah, it's, it's fun when, uh, when it hits that gear and, and everybody's just all out trying to keep up with things. Oh, totally. I mean, you're, you're, when you're in the storm restoration business and something like that happens, it's a good thing. I mean, it's, it keeps your business going and you're helping people too. It's just, it's just a great situation to be in. And thankfully here in Dallas, I think Dallas and Colorado get more hail than most, most regions in the, in the United States. So it's kind of the same deal. It's just, it's something we rely on. So um, we're, we're definitely, you know, if you look at the SVG training, we're definitely more storm catchers than storm chasers here in Dallas mm -hmm. because the hail comes to us a lot, but um, yeah, well, you know, you research. have such a, yeah. I did the research one time and I think it was something like 18% of, uh, of home exterior claims are made in Texas. And the following you nailed 11% was in Colorado. That was the, the most recent that I'd seen. So yeah, of course you nailed it bang on there for, uh, for the industry. Yeah. So you have such an interesting background and you became a partner at a very successful uh, roofing company. And at Roofing Mastery, we really like to focus on three major components of the business, which is leadership, sales, and online marketing. But as far as the leadership component, since you've been a partner, a part owner, and you've helped 
guide this company in a direction before Sumo Quote was founded. What's been the biggest key to your leadership as a team and, and with your company? It's a great question. You know, I think the, and, and there was a Facebook conversation on this the other day where people were talking about, do you try and grow to be a larger roofing company? Do you stay smaller and try and maximize margins? Where do you go in there? Um, the comment I made on that was when you become a larger company, it becomes about governance and it becomes about managing risk and liability. So, um, you know, I think either side, you're going to have risk. The risk of going larger is you've got far more overhead. And so you now have a risk that you, if you don't do a certain volume, you're in big trouble and that can sink you. Um, when you're smaller, you're almost a bit less aware of some of the risks that you've got. So when you're larger, you can afford to hire a safety director and you can afford to have a CFO that's got, you know, lines us up with strong banking facilities and is managing liabilities and risks and, and stuff on the, on the financial side. And you can have uh, an HR director. I mean, we've, we've got somebody that runs HR, but is almost more of a chief cultural officer, which has been an interesting twist. Our, uh, and, and has been phenomenal. Our retention for our employees is, is incredible. Um, so we've got, but each of those is managing a different part of risk of the company which when you're smaller, uh, because you don't have somebody with their eyes looking at those things all the time, you might not have people waving their hands and saying, hey, hey, we could be in a bit of trouble here or watch out for this coming up. So you, it's harder to be as aware of all the risks. Um, so you pick the side you want to be on, right? If you're larger, you're going to have more overhead. You're going to have more risk for your business just because if you don't have a certain revenue base, you're going to be in trouble. If you're smaller, you might not be able to be as aware of some of the risks that you've got. Even, you know, even if you have an idea that they could be there, it's hard to manage and watch them. So governance, you know, shifting into a larger organization, it becomes a lot more about governance and, and managing risk overall is what I've found there. That's good. So it sounds like it's, it's really about having the right people in the right seats. You got the right it people is. on you got the right people on the bus in the right roles and you've got a scorecard to make sure that governance is taking place. It's kind of what I hear you saying. It is. Yeah. No, we as partners, we've had to be very because there's six of us that are partners, and we've had to draw very distinct lines, right? Because in one side hand, we're a partner and we sit on, you know, board of directors together. On the second hand, we're an employee. And so we don't get all paid the same thing just because we're all partners. It's not equal there because we've got different roles in the organization. There's a market value placed on that. So we've had to make sure, you know, and it's taken time and we've had to, um, you know, work amongst ourselves to make that fit. But uh, man, the group of guys, uh, what I say, six partners is, you know, people look at that. And it's like, wow, man, that, you know, it's hard enough to do with one or two, six. And yes, I don't always get my way with things there, nor do, nor do any of us, but um, the balance that we bring and then the integrity of my partners, I, I'm incredibly grateful for them. So I'm very fortunate to have a very, very good group of guys that I'm partners with. That is so good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like you said, that brings more difficulty, but it brings so much more wisdom when you have that peer group and you guys can bounce ideas off one another and, and really look with so much more wisdom. That's, that's really good. So well, let's, let's switch gears and let's talk about difficulties and challenges because you guys have scaled and grown a successful company. You're continuing to grow. What was the biggest pain point that you guys experienced at Epic Roofing that gave birth to Sumo Quote? Because you go from being a guy that's growing a roofing company to now you've got a software solution. Yeah, well, and it's, I mean, it's even more random than that because I go from a guy in fashion in Tenham <laughs> to a guy in construction to a guy in technology. So um, yeah, the pain that we felt there was, um, you know, like I had mentioned before, we were so reliant on these storms and we'd gone them year after year, but we knew if there was a year or two years or heaven forbid three years that we didn't have a good storm, um, we could be in real trouble as a business. So we worked hard on diversifying. So hence uh, the commercial company that we, we started and built, right? Um, but then also Sumo Quote. So Sumo Quote was initially meant to be a tool to help create a very fast professional looking quote that hands down look better than everybody else out there. So if a homeowner is getting three quotes, uh, which is common on the retail side, 
we knew ours was going to stand out as the most professional option uh, by virtue of how well it was put together. And we could do it really, really fast. And so selfishly, we initially just built this prototype of what's turned into Sumo Code for ourselves. Um, and it worked incredibly well. Our, in 2016, when we started using it, our closing rates, our win rates were 27% on the retail part of our business. And in 2018, they were up to 44%. And most of those are cold leads. We do a lot of digital marketing. You know, it's not just the neighbor next door signing up. Like we've got to, you know, to maintain our size, we've got to do a couple thousand roofs a year, right? Or projects a year. So um, yeah, it was the biggest thing for us was closing more of leads already coming in through the door and, and actually winning them at higher margins because we didn't have to justify or price match competitors that um, were obviously not going to provide the type of experience that we were showing the homeowner we were going to be able to provide at the front end there with the quote. So yeah, the pain was trying to stand out. You've got a crowded market you know, ultimately roofing contractors, we kind of all end up looking the same, sounding the same, smelling the same, like we're, we kind of, it's hard to tell us apart. So we wanted to do something very visual and very practical to show the homeowner right up front uh, that they're going to get a different type of experience with us as a business. I love that just because with, with a background in online marketing, that's something that we were constantly trying to do for our customers was, okay, you are a doctor or you are a plumber or you're a contractor. How do you stand out in a crowded marketplace? And I just heard a sales guy yesterday talk about how the homeowner had multiple bids on the roof. And he said, well, um, I don't know if they're going to pay for this. And he was so concerned about the price instead of just standing out to have exceptional work, exceptional communication, exceptional, uh, an exceptional process. And he was so concerned about price. And I just, I just hate it when I hear guys trying to make a race to the bottom because it's bad for everybody. Instead, like you just said, instead of trying to compete only on price, if you could figure out a way to just look professional and, and engage in a professional process, that'd be so much better. So, so what did you guys find? I know something you talked about where there's some keys to putting a proposal together that gets you a higher close rate. When you've got multiple people putting an estimate or a proposal together, what are some of the keys that you could give to our listeners to do that? Yeah, I mean, obviously with Sumo Quote, we put a lot of time and energy into creating something that looks really polished and professional. So it looks like it came from a graphic designer as opposed to out of Word or Excel, right? But uh, assuming you're putting some time and energy into that, I think one of the interesting things I hear from a lot of contractors out there is they try and uh, establish themselves as the expert to the homeowner by filling their quote full of jargon, you know, a bunch of stuff the homeowner doesn't really understand. And it was interesting, one of my guys, this was, uh, this was about four years ago, uh, it was a hearty job. It was for, I think we had, we'd quoted around $43,000 for this job. So it was a good sized job that we were doing. And, um, and he came into my office afterwards. And he said, Hey Ryan, you'll love this story. I was just sitting down with this homeowner. He kind of said, yeah, yeah, you know, you can stop by and we can chat. I've, I've sort of made up my mind, you know, but, but yeah, stop by. Right. So he goes by, he sits down with this guy and the competitor's quote sitting right there on the table beside him. So you can see this thing the whole time, right? And he's talking to the guy and the guy's holding his quote and going through it. And the guy says, you know what, actually, I'm gonna sign with you. I mean, look at your quote, it's so much more detailed. Now the ironic part is he's looking at the competitor's quote. He actually thinks the competitor's quote is more detailed, but it was obviously built in Word or Excel or something like that and just loaded with jargon. So you can imagine the homeowner looking at this and they start trying to read it and understand it. And they're just like, oh, this is painful. And they just tune out after a minute, right? Like it's, they're not getting it. So they, they shut it down. Whereas ours, we very intentionally make it a lot more visual and we give them bite-sized pieces and it's easy to grasp and understand. And so when they look at it, it's very easy for them to not just comprehend what it is, but retain the information there as well. And, and it appears to be in this case, um, more detailed than another one that got into all sorts of industry stuff that didn't, wasn't really relative, but they were trying to establish themselves as an expert. Um, 
it's interesting. There's a, there's a field of study called behavioral economics, right? And so in that, they talk about mental fatigue. Uh, and so this, the mental fatigue, it's a real thing. When the reason your apps and everything else, they're all visual, it's little toggles and buttons and, and it's fast and easy to navigate through. You don't need to read what a button does. You can look at it and know because it's so simple to understand. And so you want to almost have your quotes present that way, right? Where you make it really simple and intuitive and easy for the client to understand so that they say, oh, well, this process will feel simple, intuitive, and easy if I work with you. You're already making the sale that way. I know you'll function that way as we go through the rest of the project as well. I love that because it's simplifying it for the homeowner, which I put myself in the homeowner's shoes. And, I, I, and I'm like you, I came in this industry from a different industry. And so getting caught up to speed took a lot of work. And I mean, I'm still getting caught up to speed daily, right? But if, if, if a roofer would have given me a contract for our home or an estimate for our home, because we had hail damage, a lot of hail storms come through in 2016, I wouldn't have known what I was looking at. Ridge vent, ice and water shields, you know, all these other things that are on there line item by line item and how many squares, what is a square? I mean, none of that stuff makes any sense to a homeowner. So I just love that idea because it's a, I think it's a more powerful sales tool. And I'm going to download the free trial of, of a sumo quote today and use it on a, 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 we already put a presentation together for a homeowner, but I'm going to send them a, a revised one before a zoom meeting later today, because I know they've gotten multiple quotes and I want to do whatever I can to stand out, but also to make it simple for them. And so I, I love that idea. Um, and so, and you, you mentioned also, as you put together, as you put together these presentations and the, the keys to a higher close rate, you had an illustration, you mentioned it had something to do with baseball and pitching. And it mm -hmm. was something that you said you communicate to your clients. Yeah. When I'm, when I'm talking with contractors, I, I love Ted Williams uh, book, the science of hitting, right? So back from the sixties, he was way ahead of his time. I mean, these days, big data and analytics are just buzzwords going on sort of thing out there, right? So, um, but Ted Williams back in the 60s wrote this book and then there's a great illustration from the book where it shows his batting average through every single spot that the baseball can go through the strike zone. So there's 77 spots the baseball can go through the strike zone. Um, and he knew, you know, in every single of those 77 spots exactly what his batting average was, right? Now, when I'm talking to contractors, what I say is, uh, hey, in this analogy, don't think of yourself as the batter. Think of yourself as the pitcher. And if you're just hucking out the exact same quote every single time, you don't know if you're throwing to the homeowner's uh, sweet spot or not. You, you're, you don't know if you're throwing balls or strikes, if you're throwing low and outside or, or you know, right down the center. So you still have to, in sales, do a good job of asking questions and listening, right? When you're there... If the homeowner talks about their rose bushes two or three times and is pointing them out, well, it obviously matters to them. If you're the only person that puts a photo of those rose bushes in your quote and on a nice introduction page mentions those rose bushes, you're the only one speaking about the thing that matters most to the client in that case. And it just increases the odds that you're going to win that job, right? So you don't need to do massive changes to your quote in order to hone in that that pitch to you know the client's sweet spot and make it easy for them to hit but do you got to listen to figure out those little things that matter and then you insert those um and oftentimes it's it's some similar stuff right so it could be uh, you know skewing up how your business is different than other businesses whether it's years of experience or number of projects done or if you have a safety director or your liability insurance or whatever it is like, and we actually put that together on one page and call it how to compare contractors and give the homeowners a really easy way to measure us for what matters compared to other contractors. Now, the beauty part about a sheet like that is we're getting them to measure us based off of all the things that we're the strongest at that our competitors may not have, but sound like the right things and are really impressive to the homeowner. So there's some really interesting things, you know, marketing pages, you can add photos, you can add, things that you can do to really make it feel like it's custom for a client uh, and have it really stand out to them compared to everybody else out there. 
That's good. That's really good stuff. Now, obviously, I haven't used Sumo Quote, and, and I will later today, but for guys that haven't even looked at it and they're driving in their driving in their truck or driving in their van on the way to a job and they're thinking about this, what's the what's the simple process for using Sumo Quote? It, I mean, honestly, we try and preload a bunch of content for people so we can help getting get people going really fast. The simple process is go to our website, sumoquote.com, sumo like the wrestler, quote.com. Uh, there's a try for free button. Hit that. You got two weeks free. And then once you jump in there, drag and drop in your logo. You can customize the colors. You can pick what professional graphic design template you want. And you're kind of off to the races. It does not take a lot to get going. What I would recommend is spend, you know, spend a half hour with us. Do a demo because we'll show you 10 things you probably weren't aware that Sumo Quote does. We'll walk you through e-signing and a sales dashboard and how you can set callback reminders and how you can create custom PDF pages. And in fact, we've got a bunch of custom PDF marketing pages for all the main, major manufacturers we can load in for you. So book a bit of time with us and we can help you get that account tuned up really fast. Um, but yeah, it doesn't take a lot, man. We can get people going within an hour or two. We can have people going and humming and sumo quote can work really well whether it's retail or insurance there's you know it's not just exactimate we can still help help you upsell people using exactimate and sumo quote there's some cool ways to do stuff like that as well nice i like it and so the, i think the the elephant in the room with that is i know some guys are thinking gosh i'm already keeping up with a crm and I'm, then I'm doing something on Xactimate. So how does Sumo Quote fit in with that? Can you, is it easy to like just make a template and upload that to your CRM or how do, how do they talk to one another? Yeah, so it depends on uh, what CRM obviously people are using, right? We've got an integration with Job Nimbus that's live and going right now and, and people love. Uh, we've got an integration with Company Cam. So punch in your name and password into Sumo Quote for Company Cam and instantly it's linked and you just connect your projects and you can pull fo photos straight out of company cam and drop them straight into sumo quote uh our integration with job progress is coming out in the next month here so that's coming up right away um and then we mentioned exactimate as well so the interesting that thing that you can do there is you can drag and drop any pdf directly into a report in sumo quote so you nice. can drag and drop in and and again make it clean and easy for your for your homeowner right so exactimate you're typically a seven eight ten page report right just cut out the three pages that have the line items that that matter right and then you just drag and drop that file into your report in sumo quote it automatically stitches in as a part of your presentation so when you're building that contract and you're telling them that you're going to be able to do it for the amount laid out in the insurance estimate and then you're upselling them and selling them on high profile ridge cap or ridge venting or a class four shingle or whatever you want. And they're picking colors and they're e-signing, they're doing all that stuff. Their approved Xactimate report is stitched in as a part of that contract in Sumo Code. It's totally seamless. Nice. Well, it, yeah. So it sounds like you guys really are making the work. You're, you're bringing simplicity to the workflow. You're not bringing more work. You're bringing simplicity to the workflow. And I like that. And the thing I don't like about, so we don't use Sumo Quote or anything for that matter right now to put together a nice proposal for our, you know, we're 90% residential storm restoration work. So we use Xactimate. And the thing I don't like about it is it's just all this stuff, all these light items. And then we put images and explain what's going on at the bottom. And, and I was talking to the owner of rain tight general contracting yesterday saying, man, we need to figure out a way to flip this to where we've got some selling points at the top. Then we have images, then the line nine items in the price at the bottom, you know? So again, the timing of this podcast is perfect. I wish I would have gotten the free trial yesterday so I could have played around with it. And I really could have, could have, uh, spoken a lot more to it, but it's kind of nice to hear you share it in a way that people don't have to see what we're talking about because 90% of the people here are going to be listening to this. So, so what, what, um, what would you say is your biggest advice for contractors out there who are trying to close more deals? Um, I think the biggest thing is always put yourself in the homeowner's shoes, right? We, as contractors, we tend to do things based off of what's most convenient or easiest for us. 
And that was one of the things that we struggled with, you know, to your point, you're saying, well, what I think would be better for the homeowner would be to understand the photos and to have some selling points and to understand these things before we nail them with the price and the, the bottom dollar, right? And it is, that's a better way for the homeowner to understand it. They understand way more and they're not just nailed with the price, you know, their head spinning. And then you're, they're trying to, you know, climb back to get to where they should have really started in understanding the scope of work and why it is what it is and how you're going to help them and how you'll engage with their, their adjuster and, and really communicating to them the, the value that you're going to bring throughout the entire process. So I think, you know, that, that would be the biggest thing is always be thinking about the homeowner and what is going to be best for them and helping create unique value for them. One of the things we actually, for our business to use Sumo Quote for, um, is we do project summary reports. So at the end of a job, we'll give the homeowner a photo report of the work we completed. And we can have a marketing page in there, um, you know, asking for a referral. And we can have a warranty certificate that we put in there. So we give them details laying out, here's the type of shingle we installed, here's the brand, here's the color, um, here's a link to your product warranty page. We give you a workmanship warranty. This is a link to your product warranty page. Here's photos documenting the work we and repairs we completed, showing the products we installed. Um, you know, here's the warranty certificate. Oh, and by the way, we'd love to have a referral. If like, there's such value to the homeowner to give them something like that at the end of the job. And it's really simple. You're just, you know, in Sumo Quote, you're just toggling pages on and off and grabbing some templates. Uh, we have our, our front office uh, admin person that sits at the front counter. As soon as uh, our audit, in, our inspection uh, photos, our audit photos are complete, they get an alert through our CRM. They grab those photos and it's always the same overview photos and showing drip edge installed and showing flashings and, and protrusions and everything else. But, and so it doesn't have to be some high level expensive person doing this but you can you can really set your business apart in a powerful way doing some of these things by trying to offer unique value to homeowners that is so good i, I didn't even think about that i mean you know that's just that's just a great idea you know we're, we're we are really big on the follow-up process to get an online review which is huge in a crowded mm -hmm. marketplace but i didn't think about that adding a kind of a like at the end of the whole process, you've really got a follow-up package that you're sending to that's I'm sure increases your referral rate. I don't know if that's oh, something you guys track or not, but. Yeah. Well, and again, it's businesses. We are so used to thinking about what's useful for us, right? Like we, we want a, a review. Well, of course we do. Right. Like, so, and, but if we think about how, you know, what adds value for the homeowner, odds are that review rating is going to keep going up and the referrals and everything else, right? So if you keep focusing on the homeowner and anything you can do to create unique value and help, help yourself stand out to them, yeah, it's powerful. Like it's, again, our closing rates at Epic, they went from, we went from closing 27% to 44%. Like it was, it increased our revenue by millions of dollars. It had a powerful effect on what we were doing man, the numbers don't lie. I mean, that's, it's right there in the data. That's good stuff. Well, Ryan, we could go on talking about this stuff. I mean, it's fun. It's, it's exciting to talk about how to be a, a, a smart business owner and how to scale a company. Um, but we'll save that for another episode. I think what, what would be a parting piece of advice for anybody listening to this? Uh, you know what? Um, yeah, I'd say the big one is, is try and put yourself in customer's shoes. Uh, the other one is technology, find ways to make it faster. So it, technology shouldn't slow you down. If technology is worth it at all, it should speed you up and make you more efficient. So um, yeah, I mean, if, if people want to check out Sumo Quote, uh, we, we would obviously love to have them check us out. Uh, they can go to sumoquote.com. If they want to email me directly, my email address is ryan at sumoquote.com. Uh, and I come from the roofing industry, so I'm happy to talk about some different ways that we've grown and scaled as a company. Uh, you know, we haven't touched on service, but service is a massive one for our business, for referrals, uh, for then converting those to full replacements. And it's just, uh, it's probably 10% of our, our overall business, which is quite significant, especially when it's 
50, 60 points of margins on that work, right? So uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'd love to love to connect with people. It's always fun to talk about the industry. And uh, if there's something that we can do with Sumo Code to help you, we, we'd be happy to help you there as well. And on LinkedIn too, right? Yes, definitely. Ryan Schantz on LinkedIn, S-H-A-N-T-Z. Ryan Schantz. Okay. I think I said chance at the beginning. <laughs> Everybody does. It's all good, man. All well, good. I'll, I'll put the, I'll, I will put the URL to sumo quote in the notes to the podcast. And I'll also put a link to your LinkedIn account. And I appreciate how responsive you are on LinkedIn as well. So, but uh, Ryan, man, great to have you on the show. Thank you for being here. Dylan, really enjoyable, man. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you.